Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope that you're doing really, really well. Happy New Year. I hope that you guys had an amazing time over the holidays if you celebrated. And if you don't, then I hope that you had some time off and you rested well. Today's video, I hope you're excited, is our walk-in wardrobe room. <laughs> Finally, we finally have somewhere to put all of our clothes. A little bit of background, if you don't know, this actually used to be the guest bedroom. It did kind of feel like it was a bit of a wasted opportunity as a guest bedroom, but would have just been, you know, empty a lot of the time. So we have made the decision to swap the back bedroom, which used to be our wardrobe room and was probably half the size, to the guest bedroom and make this one our wardrobe room, which we have used every single day since we've got it in order. I'm gonna try not to chat too much. You can skip to different chapters if you want to. I do get told a lot that I talk too much. I am very sorry about that, but I'm a chatter. But I'm gonna try and give you as much detail as possible because I also did find it quite difficult to figure out what to do when planning the dressing room. So first thing, planning. We have used the IKEA packs wardrobes to build this wardrobe room. It's very popular, but the best tool that I found for this was actually measuring our space, going on the IKEA website, and they've actually got a PAX wardrobes planning tool. So it's like a web page, you put in all your measurements and you can drag and drop different sized wardrobes into the space and get a feel for how it will look. So we had the IKEA PAX planner design, which was great because it was kind of 3D, but then I also did go and do technical design on some paper, just paper and pen, really simple, and measured everything out. We did a scale ratio, which was 100 centimeters in real life, equal 10 centimeters on the page, just so that we could figure all of our cuts and everything was gonna work properly. They got delivered and we have used them alongside two of our old IKEA PAX wardrobes, which we've had for five years. I know people give IKEA a lot of slack for their quality, but I personally feel like if you treat them well, they can last. Now it's time to build. So for the build, we actually went with using a timber base instead of just using the floor because we wanted to add the skirting along the bottom to make it fit in with the rest of the room and really give it that built-in look. We bought 700 mil thick timber from b and I will try to leave the exact one that I used down below, but you might need to alter it depending on what kind of skirting you've got or what kind of look you're gonna go for. We actually brought our Mitosaur to B&Q car park. Thank God it is cordless, thank you works. And we cut all of our wood down to size in the car park, brought it home and installed it. You don't have to use a base either, you can just put them on the floor, but you do wanna make sure your floor is level and I will get to that point a little bit later on because we didn't and it absolutely just set us back 10 paces. Also to make it look a little bit more built in, we are adding four centimeter strips of wood between each wardrobe rather than having them next to each other. And we're gonna front that out with some MDF at the end. Nice. This might not be 100% necessary, but I'm gonna just try and chip away at any big bits of adhesive left so that when I put the um, wood base against the wall it is totally flush. We just really want to make the lines as easy as possible. With the measurement you need to make sure you're accounting for maybe the two millimeters thickness that your blade is align your wood either side of that measurement so that you always get an accurate measurement because else you'll start getting confused as to why things aren't lining up but it's probably because of the mitre blade. Something we should have done before, but I've taken off the little bag that collects the wood shavings and I've put on our hoover and I'm gonna switch it on when I'm making cuts and it actually takes up so much more of the shavings than just that little bag does, so it keeps the area a bit more tidy because things were getting a little bit messy just before. So you literally Need to take the carpet from underneath when you're laying things on the carpet like this you can do it but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be very level and straight so i think the best bet is to take the carpet off and have it on the solid wood so this is nice that we've already taken the skirt and board off the wall now we know exactly where we need to cut so we're just going to mark that with a standing knife peel back the carpet and cut it i don't want to hold on to it 
So we need to pull it like back, mm. push it forward with our foot so it goes on and then we can just slide it into place. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't need much height actually. Yeah. Okay. Tight. Push it on yours? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on. I'm on quite a lot. Yeah. You just push it to the till you feel the resistance. Yeah. Next step for us was lighting. Oh my god, one of the best decisions we've ever made. We bought the Oversiden lighting. I'm really sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. I was considering not even using lighting in the first place because I thought it looked really ridiculously confusing, but it's actually so simple. You need a plug, a driver, which you can add up to nine lights in and you can extend it if you need more. And then you need the lights, which are all fitting to different size wardrobes, 100, 75 and 50 but they're slightly smaller than the wardrobes themselves. I think it's like 96, 71 and 46 or something like that. We were so lucky to have a plug socket behind the wardrobes once we installed it. So we just plugged it in. We're gonna put everything on top of the wardrobes, but you can hide it behind the clothing or box it off however you want to. You can also get a remote clicker for it if you want to not have doors on the front, but ours have got a motion sensor on. So they only turn on when the doors are open and they go off when the doors are closed. So simple to install. We also drilled a small little hole in the bottom left of each wardrobe just to tuck the wire through really easily and I think we used an 8mm drill bit for that part. One, two, three. We're cooking on gas, as wait, wait. they say. Yeah, one, two, three. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> one, two, you do it, you do it. One, two, three. You do it. Now, securing everything to the wall. I am a perfectionist, so before we started to just screw things onto the wall, I wanted to make sure that they were lined up. So I was using my laser level and I could see that they were way out of whack. And when I would move the wardrobe to fit the line, it would have to be lifted off the ground like one or two centimeters, which was crazy. At that point, I felt really defeated because I knew my gut was telling me the floor is not level and you're gonna have to take this all off and level the base. As you may be able to tell, you might be really confused we've taken the wardrobes off because our floors were really really unlevel we were hoping that we were going to get all of the wardrobes screwed onto the wall we had such a horrible horrible time with trying to do that and we couldn't figure out why and then i thought to myself hmm i actually never measured the floor to make sure like spirit leveled the floor to make sure that it was level turns out it's really 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 not level let me show you so standing back from here i'm not sure if you can tell but on the right hand side the wood pretty much touches the floor on the left, we have now added these things called shims. The corner of that is well off the floor. I would say that's probably a good, mm, like maybe nearly two centimeters off the floor. The other problem that we have is that we actually had to cut this wood into three sections. If we had long stretches of wood, this would have been e even easier to work with, but we've had to shim all across the length of this. And we're just trying to figure out this little last section, and then we can finally prop the wardrobe back in place and get them screwed. A big old roundabout for us but hopefully it'll help you in the future so definitely get some shims you okay yeah perfect lovely stuff nice happy yeah by the way guys when it comes to using a spirit level if you're trying to measure something as long as the side of this wardrobe try and get as long spirit level as you can because it makes a more accurate reading across the length of it. If you're gonna go and try and use one of those diddy diddy ones, it's not really gonna work. Try and use the closest size spirit level to the closest piece of material that you're measuring. <laughs> this is how we're looking. It's a little bit hard to get them all on the camera, but hopefully you get the gist. We've got the lighting in, we're going through now, adding our poles. We are tidying up any cable stuff that's going on so we've still got these ones to do but that's how it looks when it's a little bit tidier um i just wanted to show you when it comes to fitting them all in first of all having a straight base made such a difference i know it looks a little bit crazy on the ends but hopefully the skirting board is going to fix all of those issues and it's all going to hide everything but having a straight base made putting all of these up so much better everything just fell into place we just made sure to leave our wood between when we were putting them in place and making sure that the wood fit all the way up 
to the top as well so yeah we're just going to try and get all of the drawers built in place all the wires tidied up and the doors on as well So then it was time to build the dressing island for some extra storage for my skincare and makeup. Built up all the drawers and I've put all of my makeup and skincare and hair bits and just everything that didn't have a home. I've boxed everything off and put them in the drawers and I can't even tell you how great of a storage solution these drawers are. 100% recommend if you've been considering making some sort of makeup island. It's great. Also really blessed that it fit in this room because for a while in Ikea, me and Rob were there for probably 20 minutes and I was trying to figure out if I wanted the three drawers or the four drawers because obviously four drawers is more storage but also they were relatively higher. So I didn't really know what to do but we went for the three drawers in the end and I think both me and Rob are really happy that we did because it looks normal. I think the four drawers might have looked a little bit too high and that's where we are. There's still a lot to go but we love it. So it's been a couple of weeks since we got everything installed and we've been able to actually live in this space and let me tell you I'm so so happy because it is right next door to our bedroom. It has just been such a nice feeling having a shower, walking in here in the morning and having everything laid out, everything has a home and it feels really really functional and practical. So first thing just whilst we're stood here I'm thinking colours. I at the moment I'm loving a very warm teddy bear, warm colours, the neutrals. I know it's very sad beige but I'm a sad beige baby so I love it. A bit more of a kind of sandy colour on the wardrobes with some panelling to make it look more built in along with some coving along the top. I might actually just leave the rest of the coving for the rest of the room but let me know what you think and then on the walls as well I don't know whether to do a similar blend to the wardrobes or do something different like a lighter colour to make the wardrobe stand out or to make them look more built in do the sim same sort of colour window treatments I don't think we're going to be able to get away with curtains because something I'll tell you about in a second is what I'll be using the wall space for so instead I'm thinking to do some really nice blinds as you can see we've got one of the IKEA Pax Corner wardrobes this has been such a great investment for us for hanging some longer items like our long coats, any long dresses I've got. There's also plenty of room at the bottom. It's a bit of a dead space, so I'm thinking to maybe get a shoe rack and build that in, or we could potentially buy some extra shelves from Ikea and get those screwed in. On this side, we've got jumpers and perfumes and a couple of handbags on the bottom. Absolutely love the lights, by the way. If you're considering getting the lights, I 100% would. The fact that they're just plugged in makes it so much easier so I don't ever have to think about changing the battery on them. This is Rob's wardrobe. <laughs> Obviously I haven't put handles on just yet so I'm reaching to open things. This is our shared wardrobe for things like hoodies, sweatshirts and coats. Same for me at the bottom, I've got the bottom rail, he's got the top rail. That was really handy for us to just have loads of hanging space. And then this is my wardrobe. Exactly the same as I've always had it to be honest. Two of these wardrobes are our existing wardrobes from our old home in Newcastle. They flat pack really well and they transported really well. So I've just got the same setup, but it's nice that I've got a little bit more room now because we do have some other places to put some more clothes. And I know you might be looking and thinking, you guys have got a lot of clothes and I do need to go through and do a bit of a clear out. But honestly, I, I know the last time I wore all of these clothes. So it's not even like I don't wear anything crazy it's crazy you will see a slight little gap here we've got a washing basket down there just for now but i'm thinking that is dead space i could round it off and just leave that as a place for things like ironing boards blah blah, blah. but i feel like it might end up being a space that things get shoved into 
carelessly when we just don't have anywhere else for them. So as it stands at the moment, you haven't really seen um, where we're keeping our shoes or bags because I don't really have anywhere for all of that stuff. So I'm thinking I might be best off building some shelves out of MDF to size to fit that space perfectly, all the way back, all the way to both sides, the same height as the wardrobes, paint it all the same color and that can be somewhere where I can put stuff. Even if it's in like really nice baskets, you know, some things just don't really have a home and you don't really want them on display. So I could do baskets as well. Another space that I'm thinking of some storage, but this is for some display storage, is this section here. This is why I said we couldn't have curtains because it would have interfered. But I'm hoping to get a ladder shelf. It's from Habitat. I think it's called the Jesse shelf ladder but um, it's out of stock at the minute in the colour that I want so I'm waiting for that to come in stock or I'm going to potentially build my own one to size so figuring that out but yeah there's going to be a ladder shelf here and that's going to hold maybe some more perfumes, handbags that I reach for on a daily basis or just things that I could put on display. The last place I'm thinking about some storage is here. Originally I had actually bought another wardrobe that was meant to go here and it was a 50 centimetre but when we built them all up and put them in place at first it was just way too intrusive to this space getting in the room like you could you could walk in comfortably but it was like the wardrobe was at your shoulder there so we decided to scrap that but i'm thinking we could do something similar but much more shallow depth so that it doesn't infringe on our space when we're walking in and something that we could use for shoe storage like trainers and stuff i could potentially make it so it's like that downward slotted one so you can kind of just pop your shoes in there I don't know, but I do think that would be another nice space for some storage so it's not so much of a waste. Now onto some pretty stuff. I have ordered us this beautiful mirror. This is from William Woods Mirrors. It is the Tamara, I think, in the walnut finish. Beautiful. It is an investment piece. It is an expensive mirror. Mirrors are expensive. I saw a meme the other day that said no one prepared me for adulthood and how much mirrors cost and I 100% agree with that because why are they so expensive? And it's because you can't make them yourself. Best believe I would have tried to make this if I could but beautiful arch. Love the colour. It is really good quality and it is the sort of thing that I think we will have for years and years and years and years to come because it will just fit in seamlessly with any sort of decor space. I'm trying to decide what sort of tabletop to put on top of this. I am think I think I'm leaning towards more of that dark walnut wood topper, like we have the same colour as the mirror. I think that will look gorgeous. But this is absolutely incredible for storage. I've got all of my skincare, all of my hair care, all of the things that don't have homes, you know, like your nail making kit, your wax kit, things to put your lady products like I've even got PJs at the bottom drawer of here, so really love them. I'll show you the containers that I've used as well. Hope you can see, but I've got my everyday makeup here in some small storage baskets that I got from Ikea. I'll leave the link down below. And then I've got my hair care stuff. This is my Sharp Flex. It's brilliant. Let me know if you want a review on it. And then I've got more skincare, things that are just excess or they're new, ready to be used when I run out of my other stuff and things that you just don't necessarily always have a home for. But yeah, that's where we're at with the wardrobe room for now. I am absolutely obsessed with how practical and functional it is. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, the next video is gonna be us starting to do some of the prettiness. So we still need to paint the ceiling, paint the walls, and then I need to finish off the wardrobe doors putting the MDF frame in around everything and the coving and the moulding, getting all of that painted. I think that's where I'm gonna try and get to for the next video, which is having everything painted and boxed off. So at this point, I would love to know what you think. I love when you guys share your ideas with me. Let me know if you're vibing with what I am potentially gonna do with the room and if there's anything I haven't thought of. Comment down below, like and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss the next one and I will see you then. Hopefully it won't be too far away but hopefully I might have a vlog for you in between this video and the next as well. So I'll see you in the next one guys. Take care. Lots of love.